So I repeat, the first paper is Data-Driven Crowd Analysis in Videos. The presenter is Mikhail Rodriguez, and the co-authors are Josef Sivic, Ivan Laptev, and Jean-Yves Odebrecht. Hello, everyone. Today I'll be talking about data-driven crowd analysis in videos. My name is Mikhail Rodriguez, and this is joint work with Joseph Civic, Ivan Laptev, and Jean-Yves Oliver. And we're from the Willow Group at INRIA in Paris. Our goal in this work is given the initial position of a person, we want to be able to track them as they move throughout a crowd, such as the person that you see over here. As you'll notice from this example, the constant interaction amongst the people within the crowd, the many inter-object occlusions, and the complex behavior of the person in this video renders this a very challenging task. By the way, don't worry, the person ends up just fine at the end of the video. Uh, now, being able to uh, understand crowds of people is a very important problem. Given that with the growth of the world population, uh, many public areas are, are commonly densely populated. Also, there's a recent study that shows that more than half of the world's population currently lives, lives in a densely populated area. Therefore, understanding crowds of people is an important task. Now, there's been a number of studies that have begun to look at this problem. In particular, a number of studies have started looking at typical crowd behaviors, such as the ones that you see on the left over here of this crosswalk scene. There's also been a number of studies looking at low to medium densities, such as the video that you see from the pets workshop in the bottom left. However, crowds of people are capable of hosting a wide range of different behaviors, uh, such as coordinated motion, fighting, and stampedes, as you can see on the, on the right-hand side. Being able to understand this wide range of crowd behaviors is a very challenging task. Now, another challenge that is posed by crowds is the fact that a person's behavior is complicated and depends on many different factors. That is, the assumption that a mass of people behaves more or less the same is usually incorrect. In fact, a person's behavior depends on things such as the layout of the scene, the density of the people, and the goals of an individual within the crowd. Also, the role of an individual within the crowd is very important. Whether you be a police, protester, or marathon runner, your emotion and behavior within this crowd is going to be closely tied to this role. Now, because explicitly modeling all these subtle aspects that determine the motion of a person within a crowd is very complicated, in this work, we take a data-driven view of crowd behavior. And this begins with the idea that any given crowd can be thought of as being a combination of previously observed crowds. More specifically, we want to explain an input video as being a combination of space-time patches from many other videos. And the idea is then we could transfer pre-computed motion priors, which have been computed from those previously observed videos, in order to assist us in tracking. An example of that can be seen here. In the middle, we have a busy marathon sequence. And in it, we see that it has regions that are similar to other videos which we may have observed in the past. An example of this can be seen in the red bounding box, where we have people running towards the bottom of the scene. We, this is similar to a video seen in the top left. We also have a region of people running towards the right in the green bounding box, which is similar to a video seen in the bottom left. The idea is that these videos should provide us with strong cues as to how certain people move within regions of the video. And by pre-computing uh, motion priors from a, a large database of videos, we should be able to better understand how people move within a crowd. Now, in following a data-driven approach uh, to, to the solution to this problem, we're uh, building on, a, on a existing works that have looked at data-driven approaches to other problems, such as that of recognition in still images and video, texture synthesis and graphics, in painting, and image processing. So our hope is that by looking at another problem, we'll be building on some of these data-driven approaches. What I'll do today is I'll begin by giving a brief overview of the various components of our approach, and then I'll give additional details in the subsequent slides. We begin our approach by collecting a large number of videos, and we're going to, uh, we intend to use these videos to learn motion priors by performing long-term analysis in an offline manner. We can then use these motion priors to drive a tracking algorithm. During testing, we obtain a crowd patch around the person that we're interested in tracking, and then we match this crowd patch to a database in order to obtain a set of matching crowd patches, as you can see here. 
we can then transfer the pre-computed motion priors that are associated with those matching crowd patches in order to assist us in improving tracking. Now, because we're interested in tracking individuals in a wide range of scenes, we want to sample the space of crowded videos as broadly as possible. To this end, we've collected a wide range of videos that span different densities, viewpoints, zoom levels, and different crowd motions. We have in total about 520 videos with over a million frames in 10 hours and 20 minutes of video. To give you an idea of what these videos look like, here we have a small sample of them. Uh, you'll notice a wide range of different densities and viewpoints. And by the way, all these videos will be available for everyone to download on our website. Once we have a collection of videos, we proceed to pre-compute motion priors. And for every video in our database, we compute two different types of priors. The first of them is optical flow, which has been averaged over a number of different frames. As you can see from this example here in the bottom left, the motion of the person is indicated by color as uh, indicated by the legend in the top right. And as you can appreciate from this average optical flow example, uh, this, this approach is only able to capture the dominant behaviors at any one location in the scene. For that reason, we also explore another approach, which is the correlated topic model, which allows for capturing multiple motions at any one location. This can be seen here by how this approach is able to capture both the left to right and the right to left motions uh, from the scene and th in different layers. Now, once we've computed or, or pre-computed our motion priors during testing, our first approach is to be able to match a set of videos that roughly match the input sequence. And then we want to go ahead and perform local matching. So there's diff two different stages to this, and I'll describe these in the following slides. First, we want to do a rough pre-filtering based on global scene attributes. And to do this, we use the gist descriptor. Given an input sequence, we compute its gist descriptor, and then we index into the database, and we obtain the closest matching videos that uh, are roughly aligned with the initial sequence in terms of viewpoint, density, and general layout of the scene. Once we've done this, once we have this set of global matching scenes, we proceed to obtain a crowd patch around the person that we're interested in tracking, and then we uh, compute the 3D hog descriptor, which captures both appearance and motion by obtaining the, both the spatial and the temporal gradients. We can then match this 3D hog descriptor to the set of global matching scenes in order to obtain a set of matching crowd patches. To give you an idea of how this looks like in the real world, on the left-hand side, we have a query crowd patch, and on the right-hand side, we have some of the top matching patches. You'll notice that they're similar both in appearance and also in the motion that's exhibited by the people in the, in the matching patches. Other examples can be seen here. On the left-hand side, we have a query, and on the right-hand side, we have some of the matches. Same goes for the different, uh, the different rows here. We have another query on the left, and then the matches over here. You'll notice that there's almost uh, a match also in terms of the, the density of the people, somewhat the behavior that's being exhibited. And the idea is that once we have these crowd matching crowd patches, we can incorporate them into tracking. More specifically, we want to incorporate these into our baseline tracker, which consists of a simple Kalman tracker that assumes a linear uh, motion model uh, Gaussian noise and state spaces position and velocity. The way we want to incorporate these is by reweighting the tracker's prediction and observation. More specifically, given a testing video, such as the one that you see on the left, and if we have a current tracker position indicated by the uh, bounding box here, when there's no additional source of information, the linear motion model and the observation alone drive the tracker. And in these type of very densely crowded scenes, what tends to happen is sometimes the observation gets confused, especially if a person is going against the flow of traffic. So we, we usually end up with incorrectly inferred motion. So what we want to do here is uh, use the closest matching crowd patches uh, in order to assist us in tracking. And more specifically, we want to use the pre-computed motion priors seen here uh, in uh, yellow. And we want to use these to reweight the observation and the prediction, as can be seen here by the new blue arrow. This is akin to the approach used in image denoising of non-local means, 
in which mul multiple noisy measurements are combined in order to obtain a better estimate. However, in this, uh, in this particular example and in our work, we're not using the, the means from the same video, but instead from a database. And the reason for doing this is going to become a little bit clearer when we begin looking at rare and abrupt behaviors in the following slides. Now, in order to assess the effectiveness of this, we devised two different testing scenarios. The first of these is typical crowd motions, where a person is following the general flow of a crowd uh, as with everyone else. And then we have a set of rare events where a person does not follow the typical flow of the crowd, and these are events that may occur only once or twice in a video. So we'll begin by looking at some results for the typical crowd behavior. These are the results using our baseline tracker. And in red is the track, and the green is the ground truth, which has been manually specified. You'll notice how it click, quickly drifts uh, and, and it becomes an incorrectly tracked person here. And then we have another baseline. And this baseline, the important thing to note uh, is that the prior has been learned on the video itself. So this is a batch mode tracking in which you ingest the video you learn the motion prior based on the video itself, and as can be expected, because of that, uh, the tracking performs relatively well. However, we'll notice in later experiments that this strategy is not always the best. And here we have the transferred priors, which have been obtained from the database itself, and we notice that it, it performs relatively well, despite the fact that it wasn't learned on the video itself. This can be seen also by the tracking, the mean tracking errors. These are based on 100 tracks. At each point, we take the tracker position in the manually specified position, and we compute the distance in pixels, and then we take an average throughout the video. This is for the baseline tracker. This is when the, the uh, priors learn from the video itself, and this is our data-driven prior. Now, as I said before, when we have rare behaviors, behaviors that only occur a few times in a video or where a person is not following the general flow of traffic, we find that the linear motion prior, or the basic Kalman tracker in this case, quickly drifts again. But also we find that the, the Kalman tracker that, that has a, a prior that has been learned from the video itself also drifts. And this is because it's basically learning the general flow of the crowd for this entire scene, and therefore this rare behavior doesn't get picked up. However, when we use our uh, data-driven motion prior, we notice here the top matching patches seen in the top right uh, provide us with strong cues as to how this person is moving in the video, which assist us in, in better tracking this person. This can be indicated also by the mean tracking errors that can be seen over here. And uh, you may remember that video that we showed you in the beginning. Here's uh, the person being tracked using the, the data-driven approach. And we notice that uh, despite there's a lot of occlusions and lots of interactions, the person is able to be tracked. And uh, again, he's, he's, he's not hurt too badly by the bull. So in conclusion, we've shown uh, that data-driven priors can actually be useful for tracking. Specifically, we found that they perform well when we have these rare behaviors. Uh, and in general, we're interested in not just applying this to tracking. We could transfer all kinds of other things, maybe like activity labels, long-term tracks, uh, density estimates. I think that it's wide open for this, and there could be other applications of it. Now, one thing to note is that in all of these uh, all these experiments, you have to initialize the tracker position by the initial position of the person. Uh, now, there are other works that are able to automatically detect the person and track, track them throughout the scene. And we've also explored using this approach. And we have a poster uh, in this, in this uh, conference which explores this as well, in addition to tying it together with density estimates. Uh, so uh, this, is, this is it for now. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.